Hello. Where's a disco ball? We need something in here going on. Maybe we need to dim the lights and then activate them. Something needs to be going on in this room to set the tone. Just saying. Welcome, everyone. Happy Friday. What will you be eating today? I suggest some grass-fed beef tacos. That's what I'd like to have today, if anyone's listening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Pack show today. Man, it's crazy. When you see the papers set up like this, you know something's about to go down. I watched a lot of content yesterday, and I could not believe. I watched a crazy feminist, so of course you're going to have to suffer through it too because she's saying some crazy stuff about Andrew Tate. So here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to start by talking about strong, independent women. What does that mean to women? Like when they're sold that story by the media, what does it look like versus what they actually wind up living and what it actually looks like? We're going to talk about that. Then we're going to talk about a talking point that runs around. Only men are liars. Only men lie. Mm -hmm. So I got a photo to show you to illustrate why that's not the case. Interesting one, too. And I got a story that goes along with it. Cosmo magazine is out there claiming it's a women's magazine. Woke ridiculous it's the magazine by the way that i think was talking about how obesity is healthy so you know there you go it's now claiming it's bad if your man gets turned on when he makes you orgasm Mm -hmm. wait till you hear the why of that too we're going to read from that article psychopaths then i'm going to react to teachers you got teachers out there right now saying that andrew tate's message is harmful to kids so let's talk about where those teachers are i used to be a teacher as you well know I'm going to talk about what's wrong with teachers today. Maybe they're an illustration of why you should homeschool your kids. And then I'm going to dig into, you're going to see me versus a psychologist who uh, used to be a sex worker. And she's talking about how Andrew Tate's a con man. We're going to play some of her content. I'm going to take her on. Not going to be hard. Going to be fun to watch, though. So that's what we got. And I'm going to close with a video. I don't have a lot of Matrix topics today, but there's one that fascinated me. This woman is saying how it would be a great idea if you could go to the grocery store and you could just pay with the palm of your hand. Brain dead. So we're going to have to break down why that's a little brain dead and dangerous. Can't have the brain deads have a seat at the table. Okay, so welcome everyone. By the way, get in the chat. I will be reading the chats today. Oh, there it is. I was like, wow, what happened to the screen? Uh, I will be reading the chats today. Delhi's here just in case I, you know, blow the whole house down, which when tech is involved, you all know I'm perfectly capable of doing. I'm not terribly savvy. You want to hear a funny story before we start, before we get into this? You know when they say, we don't need a man. I don't need a man. I don't need a man. Do you know what happens to me when I go to, you ever go uh, somewhere, you got to pay at the parking meter, but you can't put coins in. You got to like do all this stuff online. It's like you look at the meter and it looks like, it's like 50 steps of what you got to do. Do you know what I do when I get to the parking meter? See, I acknowledge that I do need a man. I take a photo of it, and I send it to my husband, and he pays for me. Because it's just too confusing. By the time I figure it all out, I'm stressed. So those women out there saying you don't need a man, some of us do. We're content in that state. All right, so let's look at number one. Deli, let's play that. It's a short, so it's going to be real quick, but it's powerful and important. Let's take a look. What I thought, okay, so we'll go back. We're going to play this a couple of times. We took the music out, copyright reasons. What I thought being a young, independent woman would look like. So you see her at the beginning. She's just sunning. She's got a little Dior written in her little, oh, look, a little cafe latte, getting a little bit of yoga in, partying it up. And then you see the reality where she's moving, and she's got to carry all of that stuff by herself. Now, why did I I cover this? Because I think it's a really good illustration And I think that a lot of women are waking up to this reality. The problem is that a lot of them wake up to this reality a little bit too late, right? Because a lot of this stuff is fun at first. When you you get out of college, I could see how women could be out there and be like, I'm on my own. I was told it would be empowering, and it is. I'm paying my own bills, right? You go to the coffee house. I remember getting out of college, and I'd go to the coffee house alone. I'd sit and I'd write in my journal and I'd look around and I was like, yeah, people would like, guys would walk in and give me a little wink. I'd be, hey, you know, just do what I'm doing, but I'm alone. I don't need you. All that stuff. When you're like 22, that feels really good. You know, you got all this time. You're making money for the first time. So you're like, oh, I think I'm going to take a workout class and you get a lot of attention all the time. So it feels really good. And you're like, oh, this is life. This is strong empowerment for women. You feel really good about it. Well, you know what happens? You go into that same coffee house at about 28. You're sitting there and you're doing the same thing, right? But it starts to feel 
a little less fun. You're like, I've been here before. And maybe you don't get as much attention. Maybe you do. Who knows? But you start to feel lonely sitting in that coffee house alone, twirling that little mug. Dior, the Dior isn't so appealing anymore. Maybe you go to the workout class, you do this, you're doing all that stuff that you were told was going to make you strong, independent woman. You're making maybe a little bit more money, hopefully, if you've been working that many years. But you feel lonely. You start to feel depressed. By the time 35 hits, if you're still doing that, you're sitting in that coffee house, you know what you notice? You don't notice the guy in the corner who may still be looking at you. Maybe you still look good. You don't notice any of that. What you do notice is there's a little family sitting over there in the corner. There's a guy and there's his wife and they're being playful with each other. Maybe there's a little kid there, a little baby in a high chair or something. And you start thinking about what you don't have. And you start thinking about how your life has looked the same for the last 10, 12, 13 years. And what felt really good and empowering for a minute now feels lonely, sad, depressing, and you start to panic, right? And that's what people talk about when they talk about hitting the wall. You know, it's, a, it's an expression that sounds harsh at first, so I'm not going to lie, but you got to be realistic. And what that means for me is that the panic sets in, that you suddenly realize that options are getting smaller, right? That maybe there were, maybe you walked into that coffee house at 22 and everybody looked your way. And then maybe at 28, almost everybody looked your way. And then maybe at 35, less people looked because a lot of those guys that were looking initially were looking for somebody that they could start a family with. And they, they, they had, you know, they're looking at you for longevity purposes. They're thinking, oh, that's somebody young. We could date for a few years. Then maybe we could do this. Or, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of possibility in that chain. But if you're already 35, you may look great, but that window is smaller. So there's going to be less eyes on you. This is a reality. So what's sold to women about this message of strong, independent women is a message of happiness. And the reality is that that message quickly becomes unhappy for those women, okay? And also hard, right? There's things that you don't want to do. I mean, you even saw in that video, you see her, yeah, it's sure, you're a strong, independent woman. You can go to the workout class alone and you can just do your thing and you can twirl your little coffee alone. I think you can handle that. Moving day comes, gets a little harder. Now you're carting boxes, you're lifting stuff. And people say, well, Jet, you can just hire that stuff out. You could pay somebody to do that. Okay, well, who are you going to pay at 10 o'clock at night when something breaks under your sink and you don't have a super? You're gonna, you got somebody. Who's coming? I know who comes for me. I say, babe, the sink's not working. In my panicked voice, I have a little anxiety attack, and he comes. He's like, move out of the way. Let me take care of this. And he does it, and he fixes it, and it's done. I'm not going to get my hands dirty and get under the sink because you know what I'm going to do. You're going to go look under there in 15 minutes, and everything's going to be broken, and I'm going to be crying. So women, again, women don't need a man until they need a man. And then suddenly they panic. You know, 35, I think it's before 35. It's probably, people say you hit the wall like around 30. I don't think so anymore, if I'm being straight. I really don't. I think it takes a little bit longer than that because women have been sold, freeze your eggs, all this stuff. I think it's coming even later. I think it's around 33. And they start panicking. And they realize that there's things that... Other people, other women are living in houses with guys and they don't have to, maybe they don't have to fix the sink or panic about this or panic about that or they've got their family, they've got their start, they've, they're married, they've got the ring on their finger, they've got security in ways that a single woman doesn't have. So don't, my message, I don't say this stuff to women to hurt women, I say it to help you. I say it to help you. I want to help you to see that what you're being sold by media is a lie. And you're going to live that lie, and you may be even happy living that lie initially, but you're going to be miserable living that lie soon. And the longer you live that lie and pretend you're happy, the harder it's going to be for you to get out of that lie and to find yourself somebody that really does make you happy and start that family and do all those things that you ultimately really do want. Most women want a family. Most women do. Okay. So I had to break that down to start. Getting feisty already. Get in that chat. I want to see your comments. I know you're driving deli crazy already. I see him already. I like him. What's going on here? All right. Only men are liars. Have you heard this talking point before? I have heard it for years. I remember, you know, having conversations even before I was, you know, of dating age. Men lie. Men cheat. Who are they cheating with? A woman. Hmm. But men lie. Men are liars. They're just, they lie for, okay, sure. So <laughs> this image pops up. Tell you have that one, number two. Well, look what we have here. Women. Men are such liars. And then this is the photo. Now, this is the same girl. That's her on the right, you know, you see. And I'm not here to pick on her, by the way. Attractive girl regardless, in my view, right? But on the right, you see, she looks like a regular girl. She looks like an average girl. She's youthful, yes. 
But, you know, she's got her skin's got some breakouts, which happens. You know, hormones are what they are. She doesn't look like a mannequin. She looks like a regular girl. And then she's done something to herself to turn into that person that you see on the left. Now, I don't know what happened here. I'm sure some of it's makeup. They can do some weird stuff with contouring and with makeup. You'd be surprised. I've seen some magician's work going on there. People make their noses smaller. I mean, it's, it's you, you guys, you don't even know. There could be some surgery that's happened in between those two photos. She definitely got her hair dyed. Um, there could be some stuff going on that's surgical. There could be some enhancements, Botox, filler, whatever it may be. But the reality, or it could just be Photoshop, right? Or it could just be filtered and Photoshopped. Who knows? But the reality is that we live in a visual world and men are very visual beings and women are lying all the time about their appearances and they're getting their DMs and their dating apps and their OnlyFans and all this stuff flooded. In the meantime, they are enhanced in many respects. And I'm not just talking about surgery here. There's that layer. There's that layer of where like, you know, women go in for Botox, you know, like it's just a routine dental cleaning now, toxic, nasty, but they do it because they're in a panic. Oftentimes, by the way, women doing that are in a panic because they're hitting the wall and now they got to compete with younger women and they're like, what do I do? What do I do? So what do they do? They freeze their face and then they just look creepy, right? They don't look more youthful. They look weird. And then guys are like, hmm, how come she has no expression? Is she dead inside? Sometimes. So there's that. And then there's also the manipulation of maybe there's women that aren't doing the surgery, but they're doing the makeup, the hair extensions. The f- now you see what women are doing with the eyebrows, guys? They're doing that stuff with the eyebrows where they do the microblading. They like, it's fake hair. It's not hair. It's drawn on in some weird type of tattoo. Mm Mm-mm, not for me. Also chemicals involved. Amazing how much stuff is toxic that women do. And then they wonder, oh, I feel sick. I got autoimmune, blah, blah, blah. Mm, Honey, what did you do this month? Botox, fillers, maybe some dye in your eyebrow, some weird stuff, eyelash extensions. What's that glue made of? Did you look and did you ask that it's going into your eye all the time? Don't get me started. Anyway, the manipulation that happens is prevalent. Women lie all the time. Story for you. I had a friend a few years back. Man, man alive. He met a girl on a, I don't know if it was a dating app. I don't think it was a dating app, actually. I think it was Instagram now that I recall. Whole page flooded with photos. Very pretty. He showed it to me. What do you think this girl, you know? He's a family friend. A husband and I, a friend of both my husband and I. We're looking. We're like, oh, man, looks attractive girl. You know, you should be to try and give it a shot, you know? Nothing too crazy, sexy, whatever. But, you know, attractive girl. Okay. He goes. He sat in the restaurant for, he goes to a coffee house, meet her. He sat in that coffee house for I don't know how long. And he's waiting for her. He's like, where is she? He's waiting, he's waiting, he's waiting. Nobody's coming. She was there. The girl was there at a table in front of him. But she looked so drastically different from the photo that he saw on Instagram that he didn't know it was her. And guess what? He wasn't too happy with what he saw. Because that girl that was sitting in front of him was a little chunk hmm she was all you know doing something on Instagram maybe she was positioning her body this way or that way it looked nice in person it was a little chunk there was a lot going on facially that I guess on Instagram and via filters looked okay but when you saw it in person she looked kind of like an odd wax figure and it just wasn't the same girl it wasn't even remotely the same girl guys don't do this stuff right They don't do this stuff on Instagram. That's weird. Women are doing this because they're constantly trying to compete with other women for attention in that space. They're like, well, this woman's got 50 half-naked pictures. I got to have 60 and I got to be more naked than that. I'm going to show a little bit of it. I'm going to do that, you know. Oh, this one? Oh, now everybody's got the Kardashian face, right? I saw somebody talking about this the other day in the Manosphere space. I forget who it was. Somebody said, I don't know who it was. Man, I wish I could remember. Everybody's got the Kardashian face. Could have been Michael Sartain. I'm not 100% sure. Everybody's got the Kardashian face, the Kardashian. Yeah. You're looking at like the same face. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, Kim Kardashian. She's so popular. Let me get that face. Trying to do it with the makeup. Maybe they go in, surgery. Oh, can you do something? So don't tell me women don't lie. They lie all the time about different things. I'm not saying men are, you know, saints. Yeah, we know there are men who lie. But we live in a society now where everyone's comfortable saying there are men who lie. But you're not allowed to say women lie or you're labeled a misogynist. Women lie. They lie about their appearance. And what happens? Let me ask you as a man. Let's put that picture up again, Deli. Can we just put that up for a second? Let's say, gosh, let's say it was makeup. It's not just makeup. I'll tell you that straight up. But let's say it was just makeup. And she managed to transform herself. And you go out to the club and you're hanging out with that girl on the left. And then she goes, takes a shower and comes out. And you see that girl on the right. You don't feel tricked, honey. 
I would feel so tricked. I would feel so betrayed. I'd be like, you have to leave. There's an imposter in my house. There is an imposter in the bed, and I can't have it. Why not just be yourself, women? God, why not just be yourself and, and find a man who likes you for who you are? I know it sounds like a cliche, but man, this stuff, men don't like to feel tricked. Bottom line, women lie too, and I'm going to say it. And I don't care if they call me a pick me. I've already been picked, honey. I'm good. Okay. <sighs> Let's move on, shall we? Cosmopolitan. Oh, we have chats. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a little bit more, and then we're going to go to the chats. I see you in the chat, by the way. By the way, hit that subscribe button. Go ahead. Do it now. I'm going to wait. Mm -hmm, maybe I'll do a little dance while you hit subscribe. Hit like. We need a song to emerge when I say that. Hit subscribe. Hit like. I could hit a button. We could all boogie for a second while you hit it. Okay. I'm going to get to the chats in just two seconds, so get on in there. Super chats. I want to hear some feisty stuff. I feel like when Deli was on the chats, everybody got feisty. Now everybody's got, mm, silent. Is it not true, Deli? Yeah, it's pretty true. It's true. They're willing to take on Deli, but you afraid of me, Mama Bear? No, I know you're not. Now everybody's going to be like, Dad, you suck. Make me read it. Listen, if you say you spend 50 bucks to tell me I suck, I'm going to have to read it. Just saying. Okay. There's a bonus involved. All right, Cosmopolitan Magazine, you know, woke, ridiculous magazine for women. I see this article, why guys get turned on when you orgasm and why that's a bad thing. So now they're trying to sell you, the same people that sold you that women are going to be happy alone when they hit the wall and they're looking at everybody else who has kids and family and they're eating a big you know, pint of Ben and Jerry's, crying, watching The Notebook at home. They told you you were going to be happy. That's what your real life is. Now they're telling you that if a guy m makes you orgasm and enjoys that, there's something wrong. you got to stop it. Okay. So let's see what they say. Of course guys manage to make your orgasm about themselves. It's not enough that men are already having more orgasms than women. To make matters worse, a new study published in the Journal of Sex Research found, aside from deriving pleasure from their own orgasms, men also derive a specific sort of masculine pleasure from making female partners orgasm. Oh no, the M word. You know we can't have men feeling more masculine. That would be a hideous, hideous side effect of sexual intimacy between two people. These feminists, man, they are trying to wreck this country. People better wake up. Feminists are coming for men. They're coming for women. They're coming just to wreck. And, and you ever notice, by the way, most of these women, these feminists, they're very unhappy people, right? It just seethes out of the body. You know when you meet somebody and they seem joyful and that energy is contagious to you? So many of these women, modern women, I don't need a man, this, that, feminism, what's great for women, they just look rancid inside, right? Like rot, something rotten's coming out. Mm, they got an expression all the time. It's like these female CEOs sometimes. I hate to say it. Not all of them, but a lot of them look like they're just inside, just brr, spoiled milk. You know, it's ready to bubble over and let's just hope you're not in the way when it does. It's true. Okay, let's look back to the study. Jed, you digress. The study gathered 810 men. That's not a large pool, but regardless, that's how these studies work. 810 men to read a story where they had to imagine an attractive woman either did or did not orgasm during sex with them. And each man was then asked to rate their sexual esteem and the extent to which they'd feel masculine after experiencing the scenario. The results are what you'd expect. Men felt more masculine and felt higher esteem when they imagined a woman orgasm during sex with them. These results suggest that women's orgasms do function as a masculinity achievement for men. Why is that a bad thing, though? You wonder. Sane people at home in the chat may be wondering, why is this a bad thing? Well, let's read. Let's read what the psychopaths at Cosmo Magazine have to say. Despite increasing focus on women's orgasms, research indicated that the increased attention to women's orgasms may also serve men's sexuality, complicating conceptualizations of women's orgasms as women-centric. So in other words, this is what they're saying. They're saying that if a female orgasms, it's got to be woman-centric. It can't be about the man. If it's about the man or he's done something to do it or somehow the fact that she had an orgasm makes him feel good, now it's a man-centric thing and you've taken something away from her. No, you haven't. Uh, men, don't listen to this, by the way. You have not taken something away from your woman if you have made her orgasm. You have made a very happy woman. Okay, and that pair bonding and all that stuff that we talk about is heightened when that stuff happens. So why are they trying to, to say this stuff? Well, it's easy, right? They want less men and women coming together. And, and they want men to be less effective in the bedroom because then women are going to be more likely to say, I don't need a man. 
And their whole narrative, this whole feminist narrative does well. If you've got men less wanting to sleep with women less and women want to sleep with men less, the whole thing falls apart, right? So it's all agenda driven. It's all agenda driven. Check this out. In a separate statement from Chadwick and Van Anders, they explained why it's a bad thing for men to gain masculinity points for bringing female partners to orgasm. This is what they say. These are the authors of the study. One reason is that it might pressure some heterosexual men to feel like they have to give women orgasms as if orgasm is something men pulled out of a hat and presented to women. They have created these lunatics, these lunatics, feminist lunatics, have made it into a power paradigm now in the bedroom. So it's no longer about you know, something as simple as a man and a woman love each other, they're in the bedroom, they're having sex, they want to please each other, and a man gets gratification out of a woman getting pleasure, out of a woman, a woman feeling more bonded to him in that experience, out of a woman getting that orgasm and he knows he made it happen. It can't just be a simple, you do for me, I do for you, we love each other, it's an amazing intimate experience. No, it can't be that for Cosmo Magazine. It's got to be about power dynamic. And they are suggesting, by the way, that if men give women the orgasm, women lose power. You lose power. You lose authority in that situation. Talk about a recipe for making women miserable, right? Now, they're encouraging women to, what, choose men that don't have the power to make them orgasm? Women aren't going to want to stay there. So you know what they want? The authors of Cosmo Magazine, vibrator culture. That's what they want. They want women saying, I don't need a man. They want them getting a little toy or something. Doing that. No pair bonding. You know, no bond form between man and woman. And guess what? Then no family, no nothing comes out of that. Ripping the intimacy right out of the experience. Ripping what makes women really cling to men right out of the experience. Disgusting. And this is their conclusion that they say, when women's orgasm begin to serve as a masculinity achievement for male partners, the orgasm ceases to be about women's liberation or sexual pleasure. They just become another opportunity for men to flex their masculinity. These people are sick. I'm telling you, these writers, these feminists at these magazines, at these women's magazines, they're sick people. There's something not right up top. There's something not right. They are so deeply threatened by the reality that men are men and women are women. They are so deeply threatened by their inability to compete with men. They're so deeply threatened by everything, by, by traditional gender roles, by everything that stabilizes society, family, traditional gender roles, all that stuff, that they now have to wreck sex for men and women by somehow making you think that it's bad if your man can please you because it takes power away from you. These feminists are sick. Sick. Why do you cover this, Jed? People ask me. Why? Why? Well, because I have to expose the sickness. That's why. If not me, then who? Right? Okay. All right. I'm going to go to the chat. I'm going into the chat deli. Hopefully I can navigate it. One never does know. All right, let's see what we have here. Ryan, the eating warrior. What is Ryan eating today, I ask? Give us the cheat codes, ha ha. <laughs> Man, Ryan's got a badass picture there. Who is that? Is that someone I'm supposed to know? Deli might know. I don't have the insight. This computer is going to be, okay. Parth Sinha. When I be gentlemen and help women, some of them see me as who wants something, and when I have some boundaries, I'm suddenly an a-hole. It's hard. Well, listen, that's true. Women who want to take advantage of a man are going to try to take advantage of a man. You've got to have your boundaries. Because you know what happens? You act like a doormat. Women will leave you, and you know who they'll leave you for? Some guy that's got boundaries. That's how it'll work. Just know that. I am Lenny B. Just gave five bucks. Thank you. I see that. What is that? A little hippopotamus that's mad? I'm not sure what's going on there. Gigi? It says Gigi, yeah. Gigi. I like it. Ryan the Eat came back. Five bucks. Ryan the Eating Warrior. I feel like AI is writing these articles. So ridiculous. You know what? I would say that that could be the case, but I've met these people, these feminists, and they're all sick. I'm telling you, man. They all, there's like a, there's something, something, whenever the other day when I said something's broken inside these women, it is. And that's what happens when you're told as a society you got to compete with a man, but you're not a man. How are you supposed to be competing with a man if you're not a man? It's maddening. If that, imagine that. Imagine being told you got to, imagine you went into the animal kingdom and like a squirrel was told, oh, you got, you got to be a lion. That squirrel would be, be stark raving mad by the end of the day because a squirrel can't be a lion. And a lion can't be a squirrel. That's what they're doing to men and women now. It's like, you got to do this, you got to do that, even if it falls outside of what men and women are capable of because a man's not a man and a woman's not a woman. Making everybody nuts, these lunatics. All right. Let's talk about some teachers. Holy, wait, and by the way, the video that's coming, I saved it. You know I did. The video that's coming... You just wait and see. 
Wait and see what I have stored for you. It's a close-up shot. This woman is unhinged. All right. Let's do this first, though. New York Post. New York Post, by the way, this is an AP feed. So what happens is people keep saying, you're pulling the stuff from the Post. I thought the Post was supposed to be one of the more normal publications. Mm, says who, by the way, first. Says who. And secondly, um, what happens is the AP, the Associated Press, writes articles, and then they get dispensed throughout many media sources. So you see something in the Post, but it's actually been published you know, in 20 different publications. So this is something like that. It's an AP pool. So I see this. Teacher's parents say Andrew Tate's scary views are influencing kids. And they pull this image of him that, you know, supposed to scare somebody. I don't know. He does look different with the facial hair, but he's in, the guy's in, in, in solitary confinement. For what, by the way? What is Andrew Tate, before we get to the article, what is Andrew Tate sitting in jail for right now? Where is the evidence, everyone? I've been waiting to see some evidence. Where is it? All I see is women coming forth who've been labeled as victims saying we're not victims and our information is not being introduced properly into the case files. And you know what else I see? I see footage at the Tate's house that would show that these women had access to go in and out of the house and I see that not being submitted into the case files. So what exactly is going on over there? What, what level of corruption is involved in this case that these two guys are sitting in jail for what? what why are you holding them? You know what I do find interesting? They've been holding them for how long now? I don't know. It's been like a month at least. Digging, digging, digging. They got nothing so far. Digging, 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 digging. That's what corruption looks like. Okay, let's get back to the article. So I see this article. It says, Andrew Tate is slyly slithering. Oh, I love alliteration. Into impressionable teen and tween minds with his toxic misogyny and bizarre conspiracy theories, according to exasperated educators and parents. One teacher at a high school in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, oh, New York, how shocking, told the Post about a sophomore who recently echoed Tate's chauvinistic views, claiming men need to act as an alpha figure at all times and ultimately, unilaterally, take care of women. Can I ask you a question, though? Why is it chauvinistic? Why is that chauvinistic? Look at this article. First of all, how many, how many things can we find that are wrong here? Toxic misogyny. Again, get a dictionary, honey. Get a dictionary. Misogyny means that he hates women. Where is their misogyny there? Toxic is subjective. Bizarre conspiracy theories. Which ones? Which bizarre conspiracy theories? The ones about the climate change agenda? The ones about the matrix? What are you talking about? Cite some. Let's go head to toe. Well, we should invite this person, whoever wrote this. I don't know who wrote it. I don't care really, but invite them. We'll talk about some conspiracy. Remember, yesterday's conspiracy theories are today's truth. Chauvinistic views. Imagine thinking that it was a bad thing, by the way, for a man to say that it's their job to take care of women. Remember when that was noble? You remember? I don't remember. When, when the Titanic was sinking, I don't remember all the women complaining that they were on the boats first with the children. No, no. Were they like, no, no. I'm staying here. Men, you take the boats. I've got this. No, because that would be weird. That would be, make no sense, right? And now we're warped, right? So this now, now we've been programmed as women to think that when a man says, it's my job to take care of a woman, you're supposed to be offended by that. Instead of say, saying to yourself, well, that's a, a fundamentally decent man that thinks that's his job and is going to work his butt off to make that happen. Warped society. Don't play the game. So here we go. This is a quote from the article. But I feel like this student didn't totally understand. That's not really what Andrew Tate is preaching. It's not about protecting women. It's about controlling them. How so? Again, these people say things. How is he controlling women? I want to see proof. How is he controlling women? And also, again, let's talk about the infantilization of women. So are they children? No. These are adult women. So why do you say he's controlling women? How do you know they're not doing what they're doing and saying what they're saying of their own volition? How infantilizing of you, again, to make women out to be little babies. <laughs> Until I see that something happened by force, evidence of that, not just somebody talking about it, not somebody talking about it saying, oh, this happened, but there was not enough even, even evidence for when their statements went to the police, the police were like, mm-mm, no. Mm -mm. Not talk, evidence. Show it to me. Okay. Then they say his over-the-top alpha male energy crept into a recent drama club meeting at a Brooklyn high school where one junior suggested the jailed influencer during a popular game identifying celebrity. So they have this game identifying celebrities and this junior suggests, oh, Andrew Tate. I was like, no, we're not going to have that as an option, she said. But one of the boys in the class was like, why not? That guy's the goat. <laughs> 
One Manhattan father said he recently debunked the nature of Tate's hustle during a sit-down with his 16-year-old son. It preys on the insecurities of young men and teenage boys, the married 50-year-old father told. He plays into that big watches and fast cars, and it's all designed to separate you from your money and your time. What is this guy even talking about? What is this guy talking about, preys on the insecurities? I, I mean, I don't understand. You can't be tough on anybody anymore and say, you want, you want this? You want this life? Go get it. You want this? It's not coming for you. You got to make that happen. You can't be tough on men anymore? That's somehow bad? What are you supposed to do? Sit down with your son and say, you're a victim of society. Don't work too hard. It's going to, what kind of messaging is that to a young man? So what, that man grows up and, and what? Isn't fit to take care of himself, let alone a family. Instead, the guy listening to Andrew Tate grows up. That kid grows up and says, you know what? It's my responsibility to do these things. And I have to make sure that I can make it happen. And there's going to be some bumps along the road. It's my job to pick myself up by my bootstraps so that I can be that provider for my family. That's somehow bad now. You see how twisted and warped not only society at large, but these men are? That now these men are saying that that's somehow bad because they've been programmed so heavily? Unbelievable stuff. I can't believe it. The Tate hustle. By the way, that word's going to come back. We're going to get to the hustler word because the former sex worker, psychologist, feminist has a problem with that word. So we'll get to that in a second. At the end of the article, it says, a Brooklyn teacher says, it definitely scares me. I do try to navigate these conversations, not to impose my values onto my students, but just kind of challenge where they're coming from, particularly when it comes to feminism and women's issues. So this guy is getting under everybody's skin because he's challenging the modern feminist narrative. And by the way, if this wasn't an advertisement for homeschooling, I don't know what is. I don't know what is, truly. So you send your, your kids to school and your kids, are, you're doing a celebrity game in a drama club, and they say, Andrew Tate, no, no, that's forbidden. Why? Tell me what he did. Now you've got a whole bunch of adults, by the way, a whole bunch of adults with big microphones that didn't even do any research. They watched the shorts. They got mad. Maybe they're fat or they're lazy or they're entitled. And they heard Andrew Tate, and they were like, he's, he's making fun of me. I don't want to work hard. And if that, he inspires that other guy to work hard, I'm going to feel even worse about how lazy I am. Right? Got all these people mad. So they're just like, rawr, rawr, get him, get him, get him. They didn't even do the research. They didn't even do the research to understand what this guy's message is. If you're saying this guy is all about fancy cars, you didn't do your homework. Yeah, he's got nice cars. Great. That's not his message to you, though. And it's amazing to me. These people opining about Tate haven't done one. You're not embarrassed to opine on somebody. You've done no research. At least own up like I did when I got into the space. What were there? Two weeks where I was like watching shorts. And then I was like, okay, now I got to go do my research. I'm missing something here. No dignity. No dignity at all. I see a comment in the chat. Piera, dad. The way you circle and cross things out on your pages reminds me of when my teacher corrected my homework while I stood with my heart in my mouth. I do that. I do. You know, somebody wrote me something once recently. They said, Jed has a very particular set of skills. You know that movie Taken, right? I do. I am feminist worst nightmare. I also, you know, one of my skills when I was younger was research, analysis, papers, all that stuff. So, you know, that's why I'm digging into this case. I can't believe how lazy everybody is. It's like, oh, I don't like Andrew Tate. He made me feel bad. I'm just going to say he's evil. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. I'm done. Don't you want to watch this video? No, I don't need to watch it. He's bad. He's a bad, bad man. I'm fat. He made me feel bad about myself. End of story. Okay. Now we're going to get to uh, a psychologist. Oh, here we go. Okay. So this psychologist, former sex worker, she makes these videos. I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on there. Something odd. But she makes these videos. You'll see. And in this one, she's talking about Andrew Tate, and she's talking about how Andrew Tate is a con man. And we're going to do a stop and go. Deli, we're in number five. We're going to do a stop and go. We're going to start at the start, and I'm going to go through to 319, stop and go, because some of this stuff is just unbelievable. So let's go. You guys are the product. You guys are the tricks. He uses women and exploits women to extract money from you as the men, whether you are um, subscribed to his hustler university, and hustle means to con people, or whether you are okay, let's a pause customer it right here because the, the dumb hurts already. This woman's got a degree. 
unbelievable. So she she's talking about hustler means to con people. That is one of the definitions. Do you know what the first definition, if you go to hustler and you go to dictionary.com? I did, just to be, you know. Number one, an enterprising person determined to succeed, a go-getter. Why didn't she use that definition of hustler? It didn't suit the narrative. Lazy. So yeah, he is a hustler and he is encouraging men to be a hustler in that sense of the word. In the sense of the word of being an enterprising person determined to succeed. Oh no, a go-getter. Another go-getter in society. Whatever shall we do? Oh no. That's going to get in the way of all those dependents on the state. Okay. And also, by the way, and we're going to continue in a second. She immediately, she's talking to you guys, by the way. If you like Andrew Tate, she's talking to you. You're a dummy. Ugh, you're being taken advantage of. Oh, it's like, don't you feel like a little puppy dog? Oh, you're being taken advantage of. She's already condescending to you that she knows how smart you are. And you're not smart enough to listen to him and make your own analysis of what he's saying, what fits your life, what you'd like to adopt, what you'd like to reject. No, you've been infantilized. So now we talk about the infantilization of women. This clip is going to be the infantilization of men. Don't let women like this infantilize you. It's nauseating. Okay, let's continue. Our models who extract money from you, including your life savings, or whether you go to his war room propaganda thing, you, the men, are the tricks. You are the ones that have paid his lavish lifestyle. All the cars he has is because of foolish men blindly following him. Um, okay, can we pause it here? This man. C- can we can we just address the elephant in the room? Why has she got no top on for this video? I'm confused. This is a woman of age, right? This is not a young uh, OnlyFans model. What is going on here? Is it weird for everybody else in the chat too? Something's very creepy about this video. I'm just going to say it out loud. So again, she infantilizes you. She's saying, well, you're getting scammed, right? You're getting scammed by Andrew Tate. What about all the people getting helped by Andrew Tate? What about all the guys out there getting helped by Andrew Tate? They don't count? She's dismissing that. This feminist is dismissing that there are men that have been helped by Andrew Tate by suggesting that every guy that's listened to Andrew Tate is a big baby who can't discern for himself what he likes about what Andrew Tate said, what he wants to adopt, what he doesn't. Infantilization of men by a feminist happens all the time. Nauseating. Okay, let's keep going. Is involved in illegal activities and he's exploiting you. You are the product. You are the trick. Okay, pause it again. You I can't. Are... Man. I'm just going to lose my mind. This word exploit, can we address that for a second? Because this word exploit gets used all the time when it comes to men and when it comes to women. With Tate, can I ask you, how is Andrew Tate exploiting men if he creates a message and men are drawn to that message and men like that message and men decide they want to spend X amount of dollars a month to keep receiving that message, just doing something for their lives that makes them happy, some type of improvement in their lives? How is that exploitative? Tell me how. I want to know how that is exploitative of those men. How is it in the same breath, and we're going to get into the women in a second, but how is it exploitative of women if women in the past decided when Tate was running his webcam business said, I want to partner with you. I want to do this. Grown women, adults, I want to do this. This is what I want to do with my life. I want to make some money. I feel like you can help me. Let's, let's partner with this. I don't need to manage X, Y, and Z. You can do it, but I want to do this with you. How is that exploitative? Talk to me. I mean, really, I would love for somebody to explain to me how that's exploitative. If you have grown adults that want to either partner with or work with or receive content from someone that they feel is bringing something to their life that they value in whatever way, financially or otherwise. It's not. That's not what exploitation is. Okay? That's a misuse of the word, much like the feminists misuse the word misogyny all the time. It's like, does nobody have a dictionary? I don't understand. It took me two seconds to go and look up the word hustler she couldn't just, just get a dictionary, honey. It's just really easy. If you don't like to use a computer, I don't either. Just go get one of those old school ones like my dad has. It's fine. I'll send you one. Send me your address. I'll send you a dictionary. I'll be nice. I'm feeling kind today because it's Friday. It's Taco Friday. Got to do something nice for people, right? Audience is like, wow, jazz in rare form. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> uh, 
I'm sorry, you guys are the Trump product. Hate to break it to you. Now, here's the video explaining from the mouths of two men why he's a sociopath and why he's a pimp. But the most glee I got was from the second video where he explains that the men are really the ones who are conned. See, he has maybe 100 women, but the women don't give him any. All of the money he has come from men. So don't forget. Let's keep going. Undertake to me in character because he so unapologetically snitches on himself as an abuser, as uh, grandiose, and as gluttonous, and he makes no apologies for it. And okay, let's pause it here. I think he represents this woman, man. I don't know if you if listen. Somebody out there listens to her and, and it's not nails on a chalkboard. Congratulations. I, 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 I don't have that type of strength. I mean, she's really too much. We'll get back to the end, too. I, I have to I have to, you know, but let's just let's just take a look at some of the words she's thrown out here. I see the chats. I'm going to get to you in a second. Sociopath. She has now in, in just a span of just a few a minute, maybe not even she called Andrew Tate a sociopath, a con man, a pimp, an abuser, exploitative. How, how so? Where is the evidence that he was an abuser? Where is it? You're talking about a kink video that the woman came out and said it wasn't abuse and she was a willing participant and that's just something we used to do. What are you talking about? Where is the abuse? Where is the exploitation when you have willing men and women who want to partner with him, who feel that they're getting some benefit by doing that? Where is the exploitation in that? Where, where is it? Wait, wait, sociopath how do you even do you know what that means or do we need to get you that dictionary so you can look that up along with misogyny and all these other words that you've used what's interesting to me is a word she pulls here called gluttonous as well and this is important and this links into the matrix as well because these people this is a hard leftist no question these people want to decide what's gluttonous for you right so to her she's looking at his cars and his house and his money and that's too much that's gluttonous. Says who? You don't get to decide what's gluttonous for me or for him. But that's how these hard leftists operate, right? They want to decide what's too much for you. And that's why I tell you this digital stuff is going to be a problem because they're going to look at people and they're going to say, oh, that person's gluttonous. They shouldn't be able to have that much meat in a week. That's crazy. Oh, Jed ate three bags of jerky last night? Mm -mm, we got to cut her off. I'm telling you, this is where it's headed. All of these people feel the same way about the world. Control, control, control. Silence, censor, stick you in a corner if you don't tell the line. Gluttonous. She gets to decide. What if I feel like, you know what, it's gluttonous of her to do X, Y, and Z. I I'm going to make that judgment on her. I'm still, let me tell you, it's hard to watch. At least she put a shirt on for this portion. That's all I'm going to say. All right, let's continue and let's close this. And then I'm going to get to the chats before we get to... Uh, a little bit more crazy going on. Okay. That's the shadow part of us that just wants to be gluttonous and, um, you know, the shadow. And I'm also fascinated by him because so many men look up to him, but not powerful men, not masculine men, wounded men look up to him. Now I'm going to play clips from videos from two different channels I watched the first one is a gentleman who used to work in anti-sex trafficking. So he worked with sex trafficked women and he says that Andrew Tate is a pimp, not a prophet. Yeah. I also agree with that as having been a sex worker myself, there is no need for a woman to work for a man. There is no need for a woman, whether she's doing camming, only fans, in-person work, as a massage, as an escort. There is no need for a woman to have a man. Okay. So again, for the same woman who decided that your lifestyle, but or Andrew Tate's lifestyle is gluttonous, right? She's, she's decided what you, what you have is too much. Now she has also decided that those women don't need a man to work for them. Why is it up to you, honey, what they want or need? Maybe some of those women don't want to manage the money. Maybe some of those women don't want to do that component of the business. I sit here every day on this microphone and talk. I don't manage the money. My husband handles that. I don't want to be part of it. 
I don't manage the sponsors. I don't. I decide who's going to show up on the show. Stuff that we use. My husband and I look at it and say, this is products we like. We do that part together. But he manages all that stuff. I don't want to do it. I'm not good at it. I don't want to do it. So how dare you tell these women what they do and don't need in their work dynamic? And it, it's, it's so hard for people to understand that a lot of these women wanted to partner with Andrew because Andrew knew how to make money. They wanted to make money. What is so hard to understand? Again, though, the infantilization of women, the infantilization of men. Also, I think it's interesting she says that powerful men don't listen to Tate. Only wounded men. She's decided that, that you're wounded. If you listen to Andrew Tate, you must be. She psychoanalyzed you, the feminist psychiatrist, psychologist, whatever she is. She psychoanalyzed you enough to know that you must be wounded to listen to him. I disagree. I disagree. I think that wounded people would not be able to handle his content. I believe that his content appeals to people who want to make their lives better and people who have an inner strength. Because even if your life's a mess, even if your life's a mess today, if you're somebody who wants to be inspired to do better, that content's going to appeal to you. If you're happy to sit in that mess, you're going to hate Andrew Tate. You're going to feel like he's mean. Oh, cry me a river. Go get a tissue and a Ben and Jerry's. Nauseating. So I think it's interesting, and I, the reason that I played this, and then she, go, she goes on to say more about the women and how it can't possibly be a dynamic that they, that's elective. So just know that. When people throw these words around, the reason I covered this is because when people throw these words around about Tate and about what he's doing, there is an assumption of exploitation that they're making because it's convenient to the narrative for them to make it. There's no evidence of that. There is no evidence of that. All I keep hearing is girls coming out and saying, I was not a victim. I wanted to work with him for X, Y, and Z. You see, ever see the videos that are coming out internally from their house? These girls are partying it up, making accusations, but then you show videos after the supposed act of assault took place, twerking and getting it on. I mean, luckily there's videos. I want to know why the videos aren't in the case files. That's what I want to know. I'm pretty sure you see girls walking in and out of the house at their own will. Remember the girl that said she was in captivity scrolling through the cell phone? I don't know about you. I don't know a lot of people in captivity that have access to a cell phone. Okay. I'm going to get to the chat now. And then I'm going to get to this maniac. You know talking what's about, funny about yeah. her? She Which one? This girl. Yeah. She oh, the had, one the video? Yeah. yeah. She has an OnlyFans and currently uploads to like prostitution sites. You talk about this older woman? Yeah. Oh, stop. <laughs> That's why she's... <laughs> That's why I was Let about. me tell you something. <laughs> something was awry. Everybody in the chat knows she's an older woman. You see, to her credit, you know, it doesn't look like a lot of surgery went on there. But you can tell she's older and there was a, a lot of, of skin showing in the first one. I was like, what's going on that she did these naked? If I came on to tease my show and you just saw skin, you'd be like... Mm. Jen's looking for some content hits today. <laughs> looking for some subs. Something's going on there. That's not right. She's got an OnlyFans. Stop it. You know, there's some guy that's paying to sit and watch me. I don't know, man. To each his own, but come on. All right. Let's get to the chat. The rational male's in the chat. Oh, yeah. I go head to head with Dr. Phil about exactly Tate's influence today at 5 p.m. Eastern time. You're right, Jed. Big names are confidently ignorant about Tate. That's right. Oh, yeah, so I guess today he's promoing that he's going to be on that episode of Dr. Phil. That's going to be interesting to see. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they edited that, cut it up. You know, they didn't have him on. They did not have Rolo Tomasi on there to try to make him look good. We'll see. I'll see how it, but, but I guarantee you there's editing. There's a lot of fancy stuff that went on. Network TV plays that game. Luke Astley, 20, gave some money and put a picture of, what is that picture? Deli, what's going on there? That green, what is that? I don't know what's going on there. It looks like butt cheeks to me is all I'm going to say. That's all I see. People say, Jed, you got a dirty mind. You got a dirty it mind. It looks like pom-poms in a way. Oh, okay. So Deli sees pom-poms and I see cheeks. <laughs> Tells you all you need to know about Deli 9, the differences between us. All right. Rick Bourne gave 50 bucks. Thank you. 1990, I was in grad school for the Iraqi invita in invasion of Kuwait. In a lecture, a student said first round of draft notices were ready to mail. I notice feminists shut the hell up until the Gulf War was over. My buddies agreed. If we have to go, we will. And that's interesting, right? And we say this all the time about men and women. It's like, you know, oh, yeah, feminism when it's convenient. When it's convenient. Okay, here we go. Z, H, V. Did you? Did you actually eat three bags? Jed, come on. Okay, I have a problem with jerky. 
Um, and you know, the more and more that Bill Gates tells me to eat bugs, I feel like the more jerky I eat. I just, now it's like, did you see that study that came out uh, the other day, by the way, about eggs? They were saying that the choline in eggs is responsible for blood clots. I can't imagine another reason why people's blood would be clotting right now in an odd fashion. It must be the eggs. I read that article. I went and I had a five egg omelet. It was delicious. You know what I threw into there? Some beef. Delicious. So yeah, I can eat. Girl can eat over here. As long as you give me good quality food, man, I can eat. Brit Waz, did people forget who Hugh Hefner was? Tate is the 2023 version with more respect and influence from what I've seen. Yeah, it's interesting that people look at you differently. Um, there was a lot going on with Hugh Hefner, a lot of accusations there, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that went on. But you know what it was with Hugh Hefner? First of all, it was a different time. And also, I think people wanted to be in the cool club because Hugh Hefner had managed to get pop culture behind him. Playboy magazine, you know, all the celebrities were at the mansion, all that. And it's interesting because you have people who, once you get that stamp of approval from media and pop culture, the left, essentially, the woke club, you could do anything. I mean, look at Bill Clinton. Nasty. Nasty. And they're all like, I mean, you had Gloria Steinem bringing Bill Clinton into feminist events, shaking his hands, putting pictures up on the internet. I was like, honey, you're a phony. You are a phony, but he had the right talking point. So it worked for her, you know, and it was an abortion issue. So you remember, it's all, all these people are just full of crap most of the time. Ryan, the eating warrior is back. I wonder if she'd consider body positivity types as gluttonous. These people are NBCs. Russ, dollar 99, thank you. And Ren Budin, she's just upset that she no longer fits the criteria. <laughs> what day she just meant to accept, hit the wall. We talk about that. And you know, it is, it is interesting to me that some of these women that hit the wall, they get very nasty about these issues, right? Very, very nasty. And I, I put in the title today, before we get to the last topic of the day, and then I'll get back to the chat to close. But I put in the title, uh, women are miserable when they hit the wall single. Again, I'm not trying to be nasty, but it's true. And then you see like a spitefulness come out, right? There's nothing worse. I don't care. There is nothing worse than that like, 50 year old woman who was a career woman and you know head down the whole time and didn't have a family and now she's she's upset she's lonely she's depressed she's you know afraid she's running to get her you know third injection of god knows what because she lives in fear constantly men are the bad guys she's parroting the talking points she's got nothing else right it's sad it's sad i don't want women to go down that path you know, I, I'm not, I'm trying to get you out of that. Drew Afwalo's advice is going to get you, land you right there. Not for her, because she's famous now, but for you. I'm trying to tell you, don't land there. You're not going to be happy. You're going to be miserable. Okay. We have one last thing I want to do today. Where are we? Oh, look, I'm almost, I'm on time today. Fascinating. Rarely happens, but you know, every now and then. Okay. So yeah, you see the stuff about digital, whatever. The reason I, I'm covering this is because I want to, I want to draw attention to, um, an attitude problem we have in this country. And this goes along with, by the way, the, the, the topics we talk about with you know masculinity and just strength of character and all this stuff. But let's look at this. This girl, let's just play it. I'm gonna play the tweet and we're gonna watch it and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. I just paid using only my palm at the grocery store without credit cards and cash. Let me show you how it works. You need to set up an Amazon One kiosk. You insert your credit cards and the machine scans both of your palms. Then you enter your mobile number and agrees with terms of use. You're all set. I didn't believe that it worked that simple and decided to check it straight away. I just got something to drink and went to the cashier. And this is the moment I just paid using my palm. Can you believe? What do you think about this technology? I just paid you. Why do they make, oh God, some of these young women, I mean, the dumb hurts on this, really, just not to even think about, and this is a problem with this culture. I know I'm a bit of a relic, but I see young people, they don't even, it's like, oh, it's convenient. It's easy. Oh, it must be good for me. Not even a thought about, first of all, you scanned your palm into a machine. Where did that scan go? Who has it now? Where did it land? Was it disseminated beyond? They say, oh, you have to accept the terms and conditions. Did you read them? What are the terms and conditions? Is it that they can disseminate that or sell that image to X, Y, and Z? Or what? It, it, can it be used to trace you at some point? Is it suddenly that, is, is it like a fingerprint? I don't do anything, by the way. If you see all these phones now, put your fingerprint. Do a selfie. <laughs> no, honey, I'll just type in a code. I'm good. 
I'm good to go old school on this stuff. All this stuff, scan, scan. The lesson here is that, first of all, we're a nation of robots and we're largely a nation of morons. When Bill O'Reilly used to say the dumbing down of America, I used to be like, oh, Bill, here we go again. Turns out, dumbing down of America. It's not just America. It's the dumbing down of the world. Dumber, 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 dumber. By the way, this, this girl needed a guy next to her. She needed a, a, a man who distrusts the system to be like, don't put your hand in there. Oh, why not? It'd be so easy. It'd be fun. I want to put my hand. I want to do it. I want to pay for my juice like that. We can make a, a TikTok. She needed some guy like an Andrew Tate standing next to her being like, you're not doing that. You're not doing that. Where does that scan go? I don't know. What did you read the terms and conditions? No. What? I, what could it say? It's just a scanner at the grocery store. You don't need a man? Yes, you do, honey. Yes, you do. You do, in particular. So again, they, and eye scans, all this, just beware of all this stuff, okay? Because they're going to sell all this stuff to you like they're trying to help you and make your life easier. Every single monitoring device, technique, digital this, oh, it's going to help you count your carbon emissions. Oh, it's going to help you get healthier. Oh, it's going to help. Yeah, it's going to help you until all of a sudden your behavior doesn't fit what they want you to do. And then suddenly you're cut off. You go to, oh, you're like at the grocery store scanning. And it's like, I can't buy my burgers. What's going on? Is something wrong with my hand? Brain dead. Don't let the brain deads take over is all I'm going to say. I love it. I love when people don't read the terms and conditions of things too. You got to see somebody gives me something in terms and conditions. Got my magnifying glass. I'm like, what is in here? <laughs> I'm not playing. <laughs> Deli knows it's true. All right. Do we have more chats? Uh, I don't think so. No? Are we no. good for today? Yeah. You got some stuff in here, but I don't know what's in here. Oh, that's oh, Deli didn't delete the old chats. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. We got to call them out on air. It's got to happen. <laughs> all right, everyone. So that's all we have for today. I finally ended on time, which is rare. Um, next week we got three big days. I have a couple of guests that I'm thinking about bringing on too. Not next week, but in the next couple of weeks. Do me a favor though. Get on into the comments section and tell me <clears throat> who you want to hear from. Who would you like me to have on either in person or remote to talk about this stuff? I want to hear your input as to who we should have. So get on in there and do that. Um, secondly, just to, to do a quick plug, some of you came over to Bila.locals.com and you're having a blast over there. I got some messages over there from you, so thank you. Um, some of you came over free, awesome. Join the party. Some of you gave a donation, much appreciated. Remember, Bila.locals.com, it's where I'm gonna go right after this show. I'm gonna do a little something special. Um, and uh, it's just a, a hub that enables me to keep doing what I do because we all know how big tech is and we all have to have protections for ourselves that we, I will guarantee you that you're gonna get this content one way or another, that helps me to enable myself to do that. So thank you for being here. I, again, grass-fed beef tacos, go piss off Bill Gates with what you eat because that makes me happy, puts a big old smile on my face and I will see you back here Monday. We have new sponsors next week, really cool stuff to share with you, Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And watch that uh, 5 p.m., I think he said it was Rolo. I'm gonna check that out, Dr. Phil, I'm sure they uh, did something nasty. Um, oh, we do have one more. Don the Sniper, four ninety nine. They want all your personal info for convenience. Very skeptical. Be a skeptic like Don the Sniper. I love it. <laughs> See you on Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. Bye-bye.